So hello and welcome. My name is Victoria Castor. I am the Sustainability and Water Conservation Coordinator here for the City of Peoria. Today we are at the Peoria Fusion Demonstration Garden. As you can see around this, it is a fantastic area to get wonderful ideas about how you can incorporate Xeriscape in your own home and landscape. Today we're going to be talking specifically about pollinators and how we can encourage those pollinators to come into our own landscapes. The first thing we'll talk about is that all pollinators and wildlife need four main things to survive and thrive in your area. That is food, water, shelter, and material for nesting sites. Let's talk about water first. It does not have to be very big or complicated to provide water for pollinators and wildlife. It can be as simple as a small shallow container just like this. If you have a bird bath or a larger feature, that's just fine. You just want to make sure that you can keep it clean um, and healthy for the pollinators. And it's also nice to be able to put rocks or these landing pads, so to speak, for pollinators so that they can safely get a drink and any water feature. Next is shelter. It's always good to plant in groups. In design, we like to say having three or more plants grouped together is pleasing to the eye but it also provides that protection that wildlife and pollinators are gonna be looking for. It's also really nice to plant different heights. So have some plants that are low to the ground and then have some shrubs that get a little bit taller so that you're providing a variety for different types of animals. Next is material for nesting sites. That is as easy as leaving some of that leaf litter and that woody material that your plants drop underneath the plant so that it's there for the pollinators and the wildlife when needed. Lastly, we'll talk about food sources, and that's all of our wonderful plants that we have here today. One question that you'll want to ask is, which pollinators do you want to bring into your landscape? Because different pollinators are going to want different plants. So first we'll talk about bees. They're the easiest. They're equal opportunists. They love all flowers, especially ones that have the sweet smell to them. And they will happily take part of all the flowers that you see today. One important thing to remember when purchasing plants for bees is that you have to make sure that those plants weren't sprayed with a certain chemical called neonicotinoid. And those have been proven to be kind of bad for our bee population health. So check for that. And as always, be cautious of what chemicals you're spraying in your own landscape and make sure you're always following the directions on the label of whatever you have. Next, we'll talk about our hummingbirds or our nectar eating birds. Hummingbirds love flowers like these here on the Tacoma bush and then on our sage here. They are tubular, kind of trumpet shaped, and they're perfect for the long beaks of our hummingbirds. These type of plants will really attract them into your landscape. Next, we're going to talk about butterflies. Butterflies and moths are very unique in the fact that they need host plants. And that is a specific plant that is needed for the whole life cycle of that species of butterfly or moth. So here we have desert milkweed. This is the host plant for the monarch butterfly as well as the queen caterpillar. You'll notice that this plant has a cluster of wide kind of white flowers and these clusters of flowers provide a really nice landing pad for those hummingbirds to, excuse me, for those butterflies to land on so that they can safely land and drink nectar from all of the flowers. So milkweed is one of the really important host plants for the monarch butterflies. And so these are really nice to have in your pollinator gardens as they will encourage that life cycle to take place in your own yard. Lastly, we're gonna talk about bats and moths. And bats are some of my favorite pollinators. Because they are nocturnal, they're going to be the ones that are coming out in the evenings and they really look for those night blooming flowers. Many cactus species, especially our well-known saguaro cactus, bloom at night and they specifically attract those bats and those moths. So making sure that you're incorporating some cactus into your landscape is really important as well. So next we're going to talk about different landscaping practices to make sure that these pollinators can really thrive in your landscape. The first thing is to plant in clusters and in groups. You really want to provide that safe zone for the pollinators. So having those different varying heights and having those plants kind of clustered close together will provide that safety that the pollinators will look for. Next, you want to plant native. 
native plants and pollinators kind of grew up together. The pollinators are going to be looking for those native plants and those native plants are going to provide the most benefit to the pollinators. So anytime you can plant native, it's always best. Next is to plant at different heights. As we talked about earlier, having those ground covers, having shrubs, this is a smaller shrub, this one will get to about five to eight feet. So having that variety of sizes, but also variety of species. So different plants have different blooming seasons. This Tacoma bush here, you'll see throughout the valley, these guys bloom from spring all the way through fall. So they provide a really consistent food source for hummingbirds and for our pollinators. The sage here blooms in spring and in fall. And then our milkweed is also a spring and fall bloomer. So trying to make sure that you have a variety of plants that bloom at different times so that you have a continuous source of food for the pollinators. And then I always like to say easy is best. So the less you maintain and prune the plants, believe it or not, the better it is for the plant and for the pollinators. So when we let the plant have that natural shape that it desires, you're leaving that leaf litter for the creatures to use for their nests and their habitat. And then you're also providing less stress for the plants that aren't used to being pruned all the time. So sometimes less is more, and especially for our native plants, they kind of like to have that wild flair and the pollinators will thank you for it. Thank you for joining us and happy planting.